City strife, horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and sun spin and move the horses in to the barn, then time to move them out again. Red barns, green pastures, beautiful my houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This life pleases me. It is plain to see I'm living my bucolic life. Ooh. Welcome back. So we're going to be making a dress today, but I am doing something a little differently today. I usually stick to big four patterns, but but um, I have something that, you know, may be familiar to some of you. I'm going to be playing with a letter low, letter low system pattern. Um, I actually bought one of these way back, mm, it was probably late 80s, early 90s, Back when I was living in Los Angeles, they had these traveling deals where they would set up at a hotel, someone gives a little seminar on how it works, and then you buy the thing, you know? And I did. And I never actually used it successfully. I remember at that point, I didn't have a sewing room, I didn't have a table to make the patterns, because you make your own patterns with this, okay? And I remember trying to do it on the bed, where everything was like moving all over the place, and I forgot, I remember I forgot to add seam allowances and it, you know, turned into one of those things where you just want it up, throw it away. I don't even know where my original set went, but I found this second hand and this is one, you know, for they have every year they have different patterns. This one is from like 1981, I think. So. I like that because it's before all the patterns went into the huge shoulder pads, you know, but they're more classic. So I'm going to be using a pattern from this system and it's going to be this dress. It looks actually, now that I look at the back, it looks extremely similar to the pattern I used for that Regency gown not too long ago. You know, at least it's a shot. We were gonna, we'll use this and we'll be able to see how the system works. So this will be my big trial run to see if I can have a successful pattern. So one of the things with this is you base it off of two measurements, your bust measurement and your hip measurement, okay? And so I went through and I measured mine. Yes, that is how big I am, you know? Real life people are not stick figures in general, so there I am. So I need to keep track of those. You don't actually use your waist measurement for making the patterns. You, If there's a pattern that has a dart, you use your waist measurement when you're making that dart, I believe, but I'm not sure. Don't quote me, because you know, I did not make one of these before. So let me go ahead and get everything laid out on my table so we can walk through the process. Again, terribly not an expert, but I do know how to sew. So there you go. Just realized I forgot to show you the fabric I'm gonna use. So again, with this pattern in mind, okay, I'm gonna be using something very big and bold. Ta-da! It's got big circles, but it's also got, you know, all of this going on. It's actually a fairly lightweight fabric. And, uh, you know, I think that it should be able to come together, gather, ruffle anything I need. And I think I'm gonna have some fun, you know, placing where the neckline and everything goes on here. So very excited about this. Okay. I have um, my big roll of tracing paper out and I'm gonna have to move my camera from here up to the ceiling so that we can get a better view because I'm gonna need my entire table to be able to do this tracing. Just at a quick glance, the pattern, um, I'm still trying to figure out all of their codes. 
it says CA is 40 centimeters. I'm not too sure exactly what CA means. Probably center on fold, I believe. Don't know. But I can tell you that the longest I want my dress to be from up at the shoulder down to my length is 47 inches. So I'm like combining all kinds of measurements here. Just forgive me. And so I will make my dress 48 inches. That way I have a hem that I'll be able to use. So I have my big tracing paper here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull that out. Oh, the ruler for this, it's a special ruler that you need. It's got like a measuring tape that's all in centimeters down here, but it's got this special plastic part here that has little holes punched in it. So you need one of those to be able to make the system work. And on the pattern pieces, there's a X, okay? The X is important. So let me get this piece down here on my table and I will be right back. Okay, so the first thing they want you to do is tape your little pattern piece here onto your paper. And I was thinking that I was going to photocopy it and just put a photocopy on, but I am not too sure if um, when I do that on my little printer downstairs, if it doesn't change the size of it. So I am just going to put a piece of tape up here at the top and down here at the bottom. And we're just gonna do one piece at a time here. So, what I understand is they will mark the waistline and it looks like it's marked right here. Okay, sorry, I can't zoom in and out because you're up there on the ceiling. But all of the measurements for above the waistline, I'm using my bust measurement and all of them below the waistline, I use my hip measurement here. And it looks like on their ruler, oh, I have a piece of cardboard that I am just going to stick right underneath the pattern because I need to be able to stick a little push pin through there. And, you know, I don't, I don't think that it would go very well just onto my plastic top. But on their ruler, it's only in even numbers. So like for my top, my bust was 101. I'm going to move up to 102. That's only increasing it by one centimeter, and so I think that's fine. So on the ruler here, it's 100, and then there's another line, and then 104. So I'm going to stick my little push pin through the hole on this line here, which should be 102. So the kit comes with a little pin, which I'm going to put right here okay so it's pushed in there and then that i am going to start with the front piece here and then the center of that little push pin goes in the center of that x okay now the fun begins let me move some stuff out of the way here i am going to be using hmm i'm going to use a regular pen right now so let me get started actually down here below so I can make sure I have the entire length that I need. And I'm actually just going to go based on their pattern. I don't know. I mean, I, I know how my body runs for big, big four patterns. I know that in general, I need my waist is higher. Um, my legs are shorter and things like that. I don't know. So I'm just actually going to go based on what theirs their pattern is okay so let's see here I line up the edge of this piece remember I showed you here I'll just grab another one here that there are little lines on the patterns okay you line up the edge of this plastic piece right here so it it's tacked on here and the edge of that plastic piece is right on where these lines are. Okay, and then the number that it says here, like this says 36, I would put a little mark where it has 36 centimeters way out here. Okay, so let me just start down here. I have a measurement of 111. And since I, oh wait, no, I have to start at the top because I have my little pin at my top measurement. Okay, 
So starting over here, placing this, bringing it all the way out, I need to put a dot at 19 centimeters. Okay, and then I'm gonna move it up, put a dot at 17 centimeters. This should be making my armhole. Move it again, a dot at 16 and a half centimeters and so on and so forth. Okay, so I am back here with my regular camera position so you can see this point. This is the line I drew up right here, okay? This line is right here and now I'm gonna draw all of this, all right? Now like I said, they come with a big either cardboard or plastic French curve. I'm using my flexible curve. I like it because it's flexible. So I'm just gonna turn this around here and I'm just doing one piece at a time. Once I get this one done, you don't need to watch me do the other ones because it's the same method. Um, like here, this is the X that you would put your little thumbtack in, and that's for the flared sleeve part. I'm not doing that one, okay? I'm doing this one, so I'm gonna ignore this. That's where I put my little thumbtack to make my sleeve with all my measurements, and then this is for the flounce at the bottom there. I think that they're kind of leaving it up to you how you wanna finish it. So, you know, you have some flexibility here. They're showing this one with lace all over it, that one with a border, looks like a uh, eyelet border, you know. So you have your own issues to figure out. Also, they have little codes. So what we have here is a little squiggly up and down line, and here we have a zigzag line. So let me get their book and we can figure out their code. Okay, so it looks like the, here you can see it more, it's more of a soft back and forth. That means they say ease, it's gathered. Okay, so on this, this is gonna be gathered. They're not giving you a piece to gather it to. They're gonna leave that up to you. To me, it looks like they put some kind of a band or something, or here they have a little bow on it. So I'm thinking I have the option. I could put elastic in there. I could put twill tape in there. You know, as you've seen, I've used before. I could just gather it to a, a band. Um, we'll figure out how I'm gonna do that, but that's good to know that that's what that is. And the thing that looks like a zigzag stitch between a couple lines, that means put elastic here. All right, so on this one, they're wanting me to put elastic at the waist and gather up here, okay, without elastic. And then they're showing here that they want this gathered, which is the ruffle, okay? So that's interesting. Oh, and down here, if you're wanting to do the shorter version, this, this is the cutting line for the shorter version, and this is the cutting line for the longer version. This is the one I did. I'm not sure if I'm making the sash yet. We will see when I get there. Okay, so with that put aside here, I have my piece upside down, and I'm gonna put their little piece here so I can kind of get an idea of what I'm going for. Um, I am going to be trying to do something that looks like this, all right? So with my flexible ruler, I'm just going to line up all of the dots just inside of it. So I have one smooth and I'm just, I put it basically as long as I can hold it, okay? And I can hold that pretty well. So I'm just gonna draw this line in, up, up, up to there. Can't spread my fingers any farther. And then connect these last two lines or two dots right here. Okay, so I have this curve put in. All right, now going straight across here is a straight line. This is the top of my sleeve. And you can see it's fairly narrow up there at the shoulder. And now I have this. And if you can see, I have a couple extra little dots here. Those are the ones that when I was reading my tape wrong, that's what those are. So the, the outer more ones are the ones that I actually need to draw. 
So again, I'm just taking my flexible ruler here and lining it up and connecting, well, I'm gonna use the outside edge here, connecting these dots like, I like to connect at least three at a time so I have a more smooth transition and that looks pretty good, okay. All right, so there is my top. Now, I am going to, when I cut this out, I am going to add a seam allowance when I cut out my paper pattern, just because I am so used to using patterns that have a seam allowance built into them, that if I don't add that now, I am really afraid that I'm gonna screw something up. So, I know you can't see me, I'm walking around trying to get my little sacrificial measuring tape here. This is one that, you know, it's got issues, but I chop pieces off every now and then. Okay. I use this because this is 5 8 of an inch wide. Standard measuring tapes are. And so, I'm just going to lay it along the edge and every now and then make a little line at 5 8 of an inch and that's going to be my cutting line. The solid line that I'm leaving here is going to be the stitching line, okay? So, you don't need to watch all of that, trust me. This is what I'm going to do this entire piece and then I'm going to cut out this piece along my cutting line. All right, I'm down here towards the bottom, you know, and I'm using my ruler to put my 5 8 inch all the way down. And I am thinking that they, they aren't including hem allowance down here. I think that what they have is the final length. So I think that it's important to know what your final length is. And I honestly have not measured this. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna cut it at this cutting line because I have a feeling that I'm gonna need to shorten this some, you know, based on how long this piece is. Um, but be aware of hem allowances too, you know. Okay, so I just held this up to myself and it's way long, it's dragging on the floor. So I think that the sizing on these is very similar to big four patterns where they want a very tall woman. I'm like five, four and a half ish, shrinking every year. Um, so what I am going to do is take six inches off. This is the front piece. When I go to make my back piece, I'm just going to take six inches off when I do that. So I'm just putting my ruler down here. This is the line I drew based on their measurements. Okay, I'm just gonna put a mark up here at six inches. Flip my ruler out of the way. Oh my gosh, well, let me do it this way. I need to get my other ruler here. You know, this is so much easier to deal with. All right, so here's six inches here. I'm just going to draw a line up here where that point is. And then I can come across and cut this off, okay? And at that six inch point, I am considering that including a narrow hem. So my final length is gonna actually be an inch shorter than that. So I'm gonna write one inch hem included. Okay, and then just cut it straight across at that point for my cutting line. And I will do the same thing on the back piece, you know. But this is what it looks like. You know, here is my seam allowance up there. Here is my very top. Just to transfer their markings, I'm gonna write gather here with an arrow going that way, okay? And actually, I am not gonna mark their waistline. And here's why. I could, I could, I could go back and figure it out, but I'm older and Sometimes when I use a waistline measurement, an elasticized one especially, um, for, some, for a standard pattern, it's too high on me because 
In general, I use, need to do a full bust adjustment, which I am not even going into with this. We're just using the straight bust measurement, okay? But because of that, it will hike up that waist and make it too high. So instead, what I'm gonna do is make the dress in its entirety. Once I have it made without anything here, I'll figure out where my waistline should actually be and then go back and put that elastic in there. But I'm not gonna draw in a um, waistband on here right now. The last thing I'm gonna do is there is an arrow right here which is marking the grain line, okay? And that is parallel to this front line here. This is my front stitching line. So I am just going to line that up on my grid that I can see underneath and draw a line parallel here. And I'm just doing a little up and down arrow and right grain line. Oh, okay, I just realized I did something wrong. I added a seam allowance here as if I was um, fold, doing two of these and then sewing them together, but their dotted line means cut on a fold. So technically I need to go back. I'm gonna draw my little bracketed arrows. Okay, like this, and write cut one on fold. Okay, and go back and cut off this seam allowance over here. Okay, that's pretty good. I think I have all of my markings. Oh, you know what I didn't label? I didn't label that this is the dress front. And I'm gonna put the number of it well, do they have a pattern number? They don't have a pattern number. Hi, Midna. Huh. Okay, there's not like a pattern number on it, so I'm just gonna call it dress front. And I think that's good. I'm gonna go ahead and make my back piece um, off camera. You don't need to see it. I'm gonna do it the exact same way, except for the back piece is shaped a little bit differently up here. Um, oh, dress front, they have it labeled as piece A. The sash, they say it's just a piece that is 12 centimeters wide and 100 long. It's just a rectangle. I'll go ahead and cut that out of one of my scraps that I just made here. And because I am in the U.S., you know, um, and my board is in inches, I can look on here and say 12 centimeters is four and three quarter inches, okay? Just making my life easier here. So I'm going to, using the grid behind here, I can line this up on my table, figure out where four and three quarter inches is, which is right about here. Okay, connect those lines in one big strip, and then I'll have my sash. Okay, so a judgment call here. This says the sash is 100 centimeters. My body is a lot bigger if I'm gonna use a sash, I need it to be a lot longer. I'm guessing that they just have that, you know, for regular small model size person. I know that, okay, 100 centimeters, you know, for all of us in the US here, is just over 39 inches. If my waist is just over 30, that's only giving me like this much on each side to make a little knot. That's not good. I want probably at least a foot on each side to make a nice knot, all right? So let's just say, I'm gonna wrap this tape measure around me, and if I lay, well, shoot, the tape measure is about the size that I want. So I'm just gonna say, I'm not even gonna cut out a piece, I'll just make a note, that my sash, I want it to be, this is my pattern, so I can write on it how I want. I want it to be 60 inches this way, okay? And that way I know when I have my, my fabric, have all my big pieces cut out, I'll find a piece where I can cut a sash if I need and I'll just cut one that is um, 60 inches. Make sure I know that it's for this piece. Um, 60 inches long and 12 centimeters wide. Again, mixing measurements, I know, I know, I know. Okay, so I am back and what I decided is I'm gonna redo the sleeve pattern here on this paper because I think it'll be easier for you to see what I'm talking about 
than when I did this because I know that the camera was very far away for that. So this is the sleeve here and I taped a couple pieces together from my scraps just so I'd have a, a piece big enough for my sleeve. Um, what I'm going to do is before I actually I actually get started making this permanent I'm going to put my pin um, where my bust measurement is because that's what they want because this is above waist set that just lightly on there and make sure that I have this placed where I'm going to have enough room for everything and I think I do I'm actually going to move it down just a hair okay all right so where this is on my paper I should have enough room for everything I'm going to go ahead and stick my little piece of cardboard behind it and put a piece of tape up here at the top just to tape it on there and stick my little pin. Now I'm not too sure how wide this is going to be. If you've been around a while you know I've got sausage arms so sometimes skinny sleeves don't work too well but we're going to give it a try just based on my bust measurement and I'm guessing that they are guessing if you have a larger bust you're going to have larger arms you know which would make sense I guess. Okay so I actually just put a couple little pieces of tape taping my tissue paper to the table. Maybe you can see better. So this is my little piece. I'm going to start here. It looks like 61 but I know it's 19. It's just printed upside down there. So I have my edge of my ruler along that 619 line. I'm going to bring it out here so it's straight there and put a little circle at 19. Come up and that says 19 and a half. So come out here to 19 and a half and put a little circle and 16 and a half. Come out here to 16 and a half. Let me bring the camera a little closer so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so now I'm going to do the extreme close up so you can see I'm kind of rotating this to the next little line which says 17. Okay, so I'm keeping this here, bring my tape out and at 17 inches make a little circle. Rotating it again to 20 and doing the same thing all the way around until I have all of my circles all the way around. What I am guessing at this point is that it's going to be kind of like when you buy a standard pattern where they have certain measurements you know just built in. If you have a certain uh, body characteristic that you usually have to alter <coughs> excuse me the uh, big four patterns for I'm assuming you're going to need to do the same thing to this because they are basing their calculations on this on the golden rule they call it which is the you know exact proportions of one thing relates to a proportion of another thing type of a, a deal. Now let me raise you up here. So like say you have um, a wide bust but extremely narrow shoulders say okay you're going to need to make an alteration on here like you would on another pattern. Like with me I have very thick arms and sometimes if a pattern is made that doesn't have a whole lot of ease I have to to change that. So you know that's my guess at this point. Let me finish marking all of these little circles just working my way around here and then I'll come back with my flexible rule and ruler and get them all connected. All right so I haven't drawn my lines yet I just have dots everywhere but I measured between the dots for up here and you know looking at this um, that looks fairly loose up there to me based on the measurement here between the dots here and the dots here. I'm going to have a couple inches of ease but not enough to make it look that loose on my arm. And since it's my pattern and I can make that alteration now I'm going to go ahead and add a little more width to 
this sleeve because because you know something as peasant looking as this I think I'm going to want my sleeve to make sure that it's not going to bind up. So what I'm going to do is draw the top curve of this sleeve in uh, before I draw the sides down here. Okay so um, another thing I'm noticing obviously there are no um, marks as far as like notches or dots or anything like that. Um, and on a sleeve it is shaped differently in the front than it is in the back. <clears throat> so you need to make sure you keep track of it. And all I am seeing is down here it has a little letter A and over on this corner a letter B. And over here it has letter B is the back piece which I know just because of the shape of it. And letter A is the front piece. So I'm going to assume, based on the shape of the sleeve and that letter, that this is the front of the sleeve, okay? And that this side here is the back of the sleeve, okay? Um, they don't have any ease marks or anything in the sleeve cap, so I think we're okay there. Now, what I have this way is a measurement of about 15 inches. What I would like is at least 16. I know it's only one inch, but I think it's going to make a difference. My arm itself is probably about 13 and a half, um, but... It would just make me happier to have a little bit extra. So let me show you what I'm going to do. What I have done is drawn the bottom line, okay? I haven't drawn the sides yet because I'm going to probably make some changes there. Um, my options are I can just blow this out and fan it a little more. Um, and that might be the easiest thing that really will. If I point to where the fullest part of my bicep is, it's probably going to be right around here, okay? So let's say this top dot here I'm assuming is top center, and I line my bottom line up on my grid. I know my camera is off center, sorry about that. Okay, so just for the sake of drawing things, let me find a pencil here. I cannot find a pencil offhand, so I'm just going to grab my pen. I'm going to call this my center of my sleeve, okay? And since this is my stitching line up here, okay, there is no seam allowance on here yet, I am just going to go ahead and cut this up the middle. And I know it seems redundant to cut a piece that I just made, but you know. It is what it is, and I'm cutting a piece off the bottom here just to slip in between. And at the point where my bicep's going to be the fullest, which if I look at the sleeve picture, it'll make more sense, should be just a little bit below where these points are. Okay, so like right about here. That's where I'm going to make sure I have the extra inch. What I am doing is putting the center point up here on my grid on one of the lines. I'm just going to put a piece of tape there to hold it still. Okay, and so this is where it starts, okay? If I want to add an extra inch of width right here, I'm looking at the grid that's under my table. Well, I need to move this out of the way so you can see it. I want there to be a space right here for an extra inch, which means bringing these two out about like that, and that way it's centered about a half inch on each side, okay? So again, just to keep everything still so that the camera won't get mad at me, I'm just going to slide my little scrap paper in here and everything. So what I am seeing, you know, this is just me talking my way through this process while I'm doing it, is that it's not an easier way to necessarily get a pattern that's exactly your size or anything, but it's an extremely easy way to store all of this. And if you are willing to go through the procedure to do all of this 
I think it would be fun if you were like creating your own designs or something and you didn't want to start from scratch um, with all of the different designs. Like say you wanted something with a princess seam here and a skirt here and you could mix and match different pieces from different things in the catalog. That's what I'm seeing. Okay, so at this point, I think that my sleeve will fit me fine up here. The stitching line is still the same. Move you back, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and draw these side seams. I could have drawn them before, of course, but I did not. Okay, so again, this is the stitching line. So I have marked the uh, sides for the back and the front. I also, uh, the grain line is what goes straight down here. So since I put my strip of patch tissue down the center, I am just drawing my arrow straight up there and writing grain line on it. Okay. And where these two have a gap, you cannot see that, but down here where these two lines have a gap, you know, I'll just kind of blend it as I cut across. Okay, again, I need to come back, add my seam allowance. Here's my little thing all the way around it. And then I'm gonna have my upper sleeve. This lower one down here, again, it's kind of like this, where they just give you one size. And it says 50 centimeters, okay? But we know it's supposed to be ruffled. So if I put my ruler here and go across, it's 41 centimeters here, okay? So that means that they are gonna put this much on for the ruffle. Um, well, that's enough. It'll be some gather, but it's not gonna be ultra fluffy, okay? It'll be a little bit of gather. That's fine, that'll work for me. So I will use this measurement to cut out there. And again, we have the roughly, roughly looking line, which means gather here. So I will cut that one off camera because you don't need to watch it. And um, yeah, then I'll go ahead and get started cutting out my fabric and we'll see how it goes together, hopefully well. Okay, so I just have my pieces pinned over here onto my dress form because I just wanna see in general, are they gonna fit, you know? So I have my front kind of in the front placement and I can tell, yeah, that does easily go over my hips. So that's a good thing. I've got my sleeve up here and if I curl the sides in, I think that's gonna go well also. And the same thing with my back. And putting it up here, I can tell, yes, I'm gonna need to do some gathering up there at the top, but not a whole lot, not a whole lot. And I'm still trying to figure out how that's gonna go. Cause usually if there's a facing that you gather to or something, you know the finished, the finished line. And I'm thinking that what I'm gonna need to do is, um, come up with a guide to guide it, to gather it to, whether it's a facing of some kind or a piece of twill tape or something, something that I can gather and attach it to, you know, cause it's like, it's missing that whole part. Um, as far as the, where are you? Here you are. The sash, I just trimmed a big long piece, you know, so I have plenty of length. I'll make this into a little, narrow belt kind of thing. And the same thing with the sleeve uh, ruffle. I ended up just cutting a width straight across. The fabric's 45 inches wide. So I just cut a width across, cut that in half. So my ruffle down here is gonna be slightly longer by maybe a few inches than what they call for in their pattern. But that again is not a problem. So I'm gonna leave this here for right now. I think that's enough for today. And um, next time I'm gonna get started putting it together. So I know I said that I was gonna call it a day, but I just had to sit down because this doesn't make sense. And the more I look at, the more I think this was supposed to be elastic because I'm looking at some of their other patterns that have a gathered neckline and they always have a piece to gather too. So like on this one, there's a little facing that they gather that too. 
um, on this pattern. You know, it has a gathered neckline, but they have, again, a facing that you gather it to. I think this was just, you know, a typo because that looks like an elastic casing, you know, and at the worst, um, see they have a little string through there, so even if it's not elastic, put like a twill tape or a tie or something through it. It's got to be a casing that you feed something through. That's how I'm gonna deal with it. Now this down here, yeah, I, I'll gather that because that gets gathered up to that point, but up here, there's just nothing to gather to, so. Anyhow, that's what we'll do when I come back, probably tomorrow. Okay, so I have all of my fabric cut out and I wanted to just have a quick discussion on my impressions so far of this letter low system. And I see, I see pros and cons, you know. One of the main things I see as a con is that you have to go through the process to create your own tissue paper pattern. Okay, that's the main con, honestly, as far as the pattern itself. Now, I think it's really important that you know going into it if you plan on purchasing one of these, because they can be very expensive. If you buy um, a binder, and like this one, you know, it's from the early 80s. It's, it's a, quite old, but they're still very expensive, even secondhand. But here's the good thing. You get everything. You have women's patterns, men's patterns, children's patterns, you know, tween size patterns. You have all of your basics. You have pajamas, dresses, all of the standards pretty much are in there, unless you get, you know, mid eighties with massive shoulder pads. But even then you're gonna get a smattering of everything. So for someone like me who lives out in the middle of nowhere, if I really wanted to sew a man's vest and it's the middle of winter and I don't wanna get out in a blizzard to go buy a pattern, I could get this out and make one. So the only other thing that I see as a possible downside, and it's more a skill issue, they do not give you instructions on construction, all right? They, they are gonna give you a pattern, they're gonna give you what the finished garment looks like. In the very beginning of the book, you have a few pages of general tips on buttonholes and things like that. And it's up to you to put it together, which is gonna give you a lot of flexibility that you can use your creativeness to however you wanna do your closures, however you want to do all kinds of things. Um, but like, say for example, let me pull this one out of their binder. You see this skirt, okay, a basic skirt? On the pattern, it is not obvious where you're supposed to get into this thing. I am assuming that they're going to want you to put a side zipper in, but it's not on there. You are going to need to have enough sewing experience and enough know-how to be able to come up with those things, you know, which is not a huge deal. But if you are still trying to come up with plans, I would highly suggest a book kind of like this. I love my Bishop book. It's a hard read. I'll tell you up front, it is a hard read, but excellent um, guidance in what steps to take in putting garments together. So for example, they will walk you through, if you're doing a dress and it has a back zipper, put the back zipper in first. You know, what steps to take, what, um, all the way through, if you're making a coat, how to put an interfacing, how to do the seams and everything. Something like this. There are a lot of sewing reference guides that just have where you look up a topic and you know you can find everything on that topic, whether it's buttonholes or welts or whatever. But this is the only one that I have that takes you for each type of garment a clothing construction process. So that is a Bishop Method book. Oh, this one is old. I don't even know when this one was put out, but they had several reprints. This is from 1966, so, you know, but classic. So with all of that, I'm kind of intrigued because I was looking through the, the catalog and there's a lot of really neat clothes in there. Things that I have not seen in, you know, uh, pattern catalogs like this in a long time. I think that it's going to be uh, garments that 
I can put together totally different. So I don't know if I'm going to be doing any more of these on this channel and everything. It depends on what you people say and everything. But I just thought I would share all of that because it is definitely a alternative method. So anyhow, let me tip the camera down. We're going to get started actually putting our dress together today. Okay, so looking at my pattern here, ignore this. I do not have this here, okay? I think that my strategy is going to be to sew the front to back um, on my two pieces together, okay, on the side seams and this little little bitty shoulder seam up here. And then down here, I am going to go ahead and gather my bottom ruffle part, attach it to my sleeve part, and then do the side seams on that and set it in. Because this has such a high looking sleeve cap, it looks more like a set in sleeve, honestly. And so I want to have that um, little armhole closed up in order to put the set in sleeve in a traditional kind of way. After all of that, well actually before I put the set in sleeve, I will probably make the casing because remember I decided that this is not gathers, it's elastic, okay? So before I put the sleeve that I will assemble separately, um, I will put my elastic casing on just because I think that might be easier before I have the extra of the sleeve right there because this is actually a very, very small area. And I need to decide what size of elastic. So I'm just going to use a quarter inch elastic up here so I can make my casing, you know, appropriately. And that's the thing. They don't tell you. You can choose what size of everything. Um, and if I wanted to put a front opening in here, well, I would just slice that open or something. You know, I could do whatever my pattern at this point. So let me go ahead and get started. I am going to be surging around uh, the front piece and the back piece first because this fabric will fray. So let me get that surging done and then I'll bring the pieces to the table. Okay, so my pieces are too big to show you the entire layout. It's on camera, but I'm going to show you one side so you can see. This is my back. It has the shallower neckline. Okay, and I'm just going to put my front on top of it with the right sides together, match up my top seam. You remember when I cut this out, I added a 5 8 inch seam allowance, so that is what I'm going to be using to sew up here and here, and then I'm going to press those seam allowances open. I'm going to show you one thing. While I'm pinning my side seams together, down here at the bottom, one side is longer than the other. I don't know if that's because I measured, you know, slightly out of angle down here, or if it's from when I was shortening, trying to shorten them six inches, you know. It's much better to have it if something is not the same length at the bottom than up here at the top. Up here at the top, it's, you know, where the armhole is, it's impossible to to deal with that if those are off. So centering it so that my amount that is off is at the bottom, I can just even up that hem when it comes time for that step. Um, but I just wanted to show you that because I'm not sure. This is a very long pattern piece, you know, and trying to, to get an exact angle, you know, a couple degrees off here or there could change this final length, so. I will be more careful next time. Okay, I want to show you how she's fitting so far. And I can tell you it's wide enough to go over my hips, you know, which is really good. I think that the size for the sleeve is going to be good. Um, it does look a oh, little bugs. It's that time of year where bugs are coming inside. It drives me nuts. Anyway, I think that um, once I make my seam down here at 5 8 of an inch and you know I clip and everything to it I think that the sleeve is going to be fine it as cut it's snug but remember that's the seam allowance up here so I should be okay and here we are in the back so so far so good this is such a fun big old print now remember I am going to be having like elastic waist right here you know it's, if this was a maternity dress and that big spot it would be in the middle that would be funny but anyway 
Anyway, what I have decided to do, because you know, there is no instruction, so I get to make my own judgment calls. And so as far as this casing up here that I'm gonna be putting elastic through, I am gonna be using some bias tape. And I have some brown bias tape, it's a little wide. I'm just gonna trim it in half so that, you know, it will work out fine. And I'll show you on my machine how I'm gonna sew it on. But that way I can put the bias tape on the inside and not have a whole bunch of extra bulk up here. And the bias tape is gonna flex. So it should lay nice and flat on these curves. So, so far so good. The pattern system seems to be fitting my very curvaceous body. So, good deal. Okay, I'm over here at my ironing board, ironing my, my bias tape. And it's old, you know. I do love my vintagey things. But on the inside, I was just gonna show you, it has this adorable pattern for making a little toddler dress. And it's basically a rectangle with armholes in it and probably elastic. I don't even know. Somehow it's gathered right up at the top there. But um, yeah, it's just a half yard of fabric, 36 inches by 18 inches, you know. Kind of cute how they would put that in there. But anyway, what I wanted to show you is the uh, tape that I'm using is very wide and it's a single fold. So what I'm doing is I am just folding it in half so I can find that midpoint and pressing it here. And then once it's ironed, then I'm just gonna come back and open it up and trim right down along that center fold. So I have a narrower band of uh, brown bias tape, okay? So it'll end up this, it's about an inch wide now and that's fine for my quarter inch elastic. Let me get this finished and we'll go over to the sewing machine. So today I'm over here working on the lovely and talented Yolanda, the FAF 130 in her roller derby tattooed self. And I wanna give you just a little close up of how I'm gonna be putting on my bias tape. Of course, there is a method where you find out how big your circle is, sew your bias tape together in a loop, and then put it on. I don't want to go that route today. I'm just feeling a little bit lazy. So what I have is I have it folded under on one side. The other side is just flat. Okay, and I'm just going to fold in about a quarter inch on my edge. And this is my center back here. I'm going to put this, you know, just near center back, but not right on it, okay? And I'm gonna move up my foot here. I'm gonna be used sewing this on at about a quarter inch seam allowance. And so that is basically with the edge of my large clear presser foot here being the, the guide that I'm gonna be stitching on. So gonna go like this all the way around since it is cut on a bias um, I can kind of flex it as I sew right so it's just gonna be stitched on like that I'll give you a better close-up in just a minute let me go ahead and finish sewing it around one other thing while I was sewing this I was thinking of mentioning um, when you're sewing bias tape onto something curvy yes the bias tape will flex but it's actually, at least for me, a lot easier when I get to a curve, say this is starting to come out this way, just lift up my bias tape and pull my fabric over so the fabric is in line with the bias tape and not so much trying to curve the bias tape to get in line with the fabric. So let's say here is a curve coming out here. I'm just gonna lift up my tape, put it under there, put my tape back on top, so until it starts to curve again and you know just keep on going like that and that's going to work out really easily but that way you don't have to worry about trying to shape and form and stretch your bias tape at this point okay okay so i am back to where i started here and what i'm going to do is just overlay my ending piece over the beginning piece and i'm going to come over here about an inch beyond where I started, okay? Get that on there nice and flat, making sure that this edge lines up. And just come all the way over till that seam line meets up. Lock it in. We're gonna call that good. 
Okay, so here is the close-up of that. Okay, so from the outside, it's going to look like this. So at this point, what I need to do is turn all of this, because when I sewed it, I was looking at the right side here. I want all this to be on the wrong side. So I'm going to turn it under and press it so that it looks like this. This is the wrong side here, okay? So I need to go over to my ironing board and do that all the way around this neckline and I should be able to get um, this to flex all the way around because it is on the bias. You want to make sure when you're sewing this that you're sewing your seam allowances open, you know, like that. Um, I am hoping, I am really, really hoping that there's not going to be a problem feeding my little bodkin through this. At this point, I'm just going to assume it's going to work. What I might do, though, is come in here before I press it all and trim some of this seam allowance out. Just, this is where my shoulder seams are, just so that there is a less chance of the bodkin getting caught up on those seam allowances, okay? So that when I press it this way, it's nice. Okay, over here at my ironing board, let me show you what I have. This is what it looks like right now, okay? Um, if I turn it straight in, like so, it's gonna look like this. And here is my quarter inch elastic. So I think that's gonna fit in there really well, all right? Um, I will be edge stitching it right along there. The only thing is, this is a very long area to feed a very narrow piece of elastic through. And so what I'm thinking is I'm going to use the string method for this, which is basically I am going to just sew this little casing with a string in it with a little loop tied at the end. Um, so that that's hanging out my opening. And then when it's time to feed the elastic through, I just connect it to that loop and pull it through with a string that is already threaded through. So what that means is, if this is my back, I'm going to leave an opening. I don't wanna leave it right where that is because you know that could be troublesome. I will probably leave my opening right around here. Okay, so when I get started sewing this down, I'm just gonna, I've got a little piece of my string here. I'm gonna let it hang out about that much. Place it down here. And I'm just gonna pin it in place right now so that everything will be ready when I go over to my machine to sew. Okay, so I'm, I've got it started right there. Okay, I'm gonna be leaving this little section open. This is where it started and it's got my string hanging out. As I fold it over all the way around, I'm just gonna put this string in there, you know, fold it over and press and pin it, making sure that my string is up here out of the way where it's not gonna be stitched in, okay? And I'm gonna keep doing that all the way around and I'm gonna stop right here. Okay, I will get that little edge poked in there, but I'm going to stop it right here, right after this opening or this, this joining right there. So I'm going to have this part open with two pieces of string hanging out. All right, so I am almost all the way around here. I just wanted to show you how I am edge stitching it. I'm using my clear foot so I kind of see where the stitches are there. Here's the end of my string. I want to tuck it up here out of the way so I can cross where this joining point is. Right there. Backstitch it, and now it's good. So let me go ahead and pull this out. And this is what it's looking like. Here are my two strings that at this point hopefully are not under any of the stitching all the way around, okay? Um, I am debating on if I'm going to put the elastic in now or after I put in my sleeves. See, this is where the sleeves are going to be, which is, it's a pretty narrow little, 
little shoulder area and I'm thinking that if I put the elastic in now this could be you know cinched in and kind of distorted and make it a little more difficult to get the sleeve cap set in. That's what I'm thinking so that's what I'm going to go with. So what that means is I'm going to hold off putting my elastic in until after my sleeves are in. So let me go back to the table and get my sleeve pieces out and so we can get those set together. Okay, so back over here, I do have quite a bit of this brown tape left. And I'm thinking, because of that, I might accent this in other places. Um, I might hem up my bottom edge with it. But I'm also toying with the idea of putting a line of it here between the upper sleeve and the ruffle. Because why not? I've got the extra. Um, as you can see, the ruffle here, let me raise you up a bit, is not a whole lot wider than the sleeve. It's going to be just enough that it has a little extra ease, but it's not going to be super flared. I think that the diagram here looks a little more flared than, than it is, um, but that's okay. That's okay. Having a super flared sleeve sometimes can get in the way. What I'm going to need to do is serge around these pieces. So I have two bottom rectangles down here and I have two sleeves. Now I have it marked that this is the front and this is the back. Before I lose track of everything, I want to mark uh, where my center top dot is. And remember, I was guessing that this dot right up here was going to be my top dot. So that's what I'm going to be matching up with the shoulder seam on my um, bodice part. So I need to get this marked and my fabric is quite quite colorful so I'm going to try with chalk. Will that show up? Well I think it will. I think it will. This is the right side. Um, no, no, no. Yeah, that's the right side. I'm going to go ahead and mark this dot on the wrong side. I think that the chalk will show up a lot better here. Yes, it does. All right. And I'm also going to, on the uh, wrong side of both of these, on the back, okay, this is the back side, putting a big blue X. This chalk will come off but for right now, I can see that pretty well right here, you know, can you see that? And so I'll know that that is my back side. So I'm going to go ahead and pull my paper off now that I have those two things marked and serge around both of my sleeves, both of my ruffles, and I will be right back. Okay, so I've got everything surged around the edges so that it won't unravel. Excuse me. All right, so it looks like that. All right, so looking at this, I'm looking at their picture, because that's what we're going off of. We have a picture to look at. To me, that looks like a set in sleeve, okay? Because you see this, the shoulder seam line there, and then you see this seam, or this sleeve cap coming off and down like that. To me, that looks like it's set in, which means usually, usually, up here at the top, there's a little bit of ease stitch or something that's going to be happening up there to let this one a bunch in. I'm thinking that because they're not calling out for special gathering stitches or ease, that it might not be a whole lot of extra to pull in. So I am going to skip that for right now. We will see when I put the first sleeve in, we'll see if I need to to do any easing to make it fit. But right now I'm gonna skip it just because this is a casual looking dress. If it was a blazer or something, I would definitely be putting e-stitches in up there. Okay, but remember I was talking about how I was thinking of adding a little bit of a, a little brown stripe going across the bottom. Not really piping, because it doesn't have like body to it, but just a flat line. So I'm going to cut a piece. Let me raise you up so you can see which piece I'm dealing with. This is my sleeve piece here. Okay. And this is just, you know, because I think it would be cute. Cutting a piece of this for each sleeve that's just a little bit longer than the width of the sleeve. I'm going to 
actually iron it twice. I'm gonna iron it once, opening this up so it's just completely flat. And then I'm gonna fold the entire thing in half, raw edges together, and iron it flat like this, okay? Let me go do that and I'll be right back. What I want is so that when this is sewn, um, it's going to look like this. So I have a little, hang on a second, so it just poked me. So I have a little brown stripe right here, and then I'll have my ruffle below it. You know, just a little extra, but that's fine. So if this piece right now is about 5 eighths of an inch wide, okay, if I hold it up here on my ruler, you can see 5 eighths of an inch wide, all right? We're going to call it half inch, just for simplicity's sake, which means I want to sew this. I want, at the point where I'm sewing it, my final seam line where I'm joining the ruffle to the uh, top of my sleeve, I want that line of stitching to be right here, okay? So that's about half of it. So if, just place this here. This clear ruler will make it easy to demonstrate. If I cover half or a quarter inch of this, okay, that is going to leave me three eighths of an inch uh, left from the edge. So if I leave three eighths of an inch uh, visible and then lay my tape, I should be then sewing it at this point. So, I know that was complicated. I'm trying to, trying to think and talk at the same time. So basically, if I lay my ruler here with the edge of my fabric at 3 8 7 inch, just look at this part right there, okay? And then I put my tape right next to it. That should be placed correctly. So when I make a 5 8 inch seam, I'll have the right amount of this little brown tape sticking out. Okay, so let me go ahead and get that placed. Do it this way maybe, the rest of the way across here. Once I have it placed, I am gonna just run a row of stitching down here a little bit, you know, closer to the raw edge. So it won't be visible in my final seam, but it's gonna hold it still uh, while I'm getting everything placed for my gathering for my ruffle part. Okay, so now that I have it kind of basted on down here about an eighth of an inch in, that's gonna hold it for me while I go ahead and get the uh, ruffling put together on this rectangle part of my sleeve. So on this, you know, as it shows right here, there is gathering. So I am going to run, um, yeah, I run two rows. Two rows of gathering stitches across the top. Again, the first one at about a quarter inch, the second one about three eighths or just a little bit, you know, bigger. And I'm gonna do that to one of the edges of both of these rectangles. Okay, so I'm going to be joining my ruffle piece here to my main sleeve piece, raising you up. So I'm just, you know, these don't have, you know, notches and dots and everything. So I am going to create my own. First, I'm going to find the center of my ruffle and then the center of the bottom edge of my sleeve here. And I'm going to start by matching that center point and then the outside edge. So right here I have two little pins marking where that is. I'm putting them right sides together. Okay, so I'm gonna pin it here first and then the outside edge. So you can see there's only a couple inches on each side that I'm gathering in. It's not gonna be very full, but you know, it'll be enough to make a little bit of a statement. So let me pin it here, pull these threads in so that all of the gathers are nice and flat. And I pull my bobbin threads. Um, I'm actually using a different colored bobbin. I'm using a black bobbin and an orange top thread. So it's easy for me to see what they are. But the bobbin threads are a lot easier to pull. There's not as much tension on them. So um, 
as a rule of thumb, you know, sometimes I don't, but in general, pulling bobbin threads way easier. So let me get this spaced out, pinned down. Once I have it all, you know, adjusted so it's pretty much a uniform amount of gathers in each section, I'm going to sew this at 5 eighths of an inch straight across. Okay, so I got too many things in my way here. To move this aside so I don't lose it. Okay, so this is what it looks like right now. I have that nice little band going there, adds a little definition, you know. I think that's kind of cute. I love how this print is on that sleeve. Um, what I did is pressed that whole seam allowance up towards the top of the sleeve so it would lay down like this. And that's another thing of using these patterns is there is no hard and fast rule for anything. You can create how you're going to create it. So for example, let's say I decided I was going to put e-stitches up here, okay? There's nothing in the directions that say, oh, do it above the notches, do it above the dots. There's not. But my own, you know, thought process on sleeve construction tells me that where the curve is going this way, I don't need E-stitches. Where it starts to turn that way is where I do. So I can just kind of look at my pattern and decide, okay, right about here, is where this curve turns into that curve, okay? And the same thing on this side. So if I was to do E stitches, that's where I would start. And it's just a whole bunch of little things like that that makes you think, you know? So before I sew the sides together, I wanna go ahead and do the hem on this. And I actually already did it on the other one. I wanna show you, I used another piece of my little bias tape. Okay, I have some orange thread in there just for funsies. And I think that that's nice. It's gonna lay nice and flat. And basically it's the same thing that I did for the casing up on top where, um, actually I need to sew this this way. So I'm looking at the wrong side here. Okay, and I'm going to sew the raw edge of my little piece of bias tape. Remember it's folded over on this one side. Let me turn on this extra light so we have more light there. Okay, so remember it has a fold right here. This is a raw edge. I'm just going to place that along this edge and sew it on at a quarter inch seam allowance all the way. Okay, once that is sewed on then I can just turn it to the right side like this and stitch it along that edge. All right, and that's what's gonna give me this look. So on the back, you know, it's just like this. On the front, it's like that, but it's not bulky at all, you know, and it adds one more little interest, interest little defining stripe there. So I kinda like that. I'm gonna go ahead and do this hem or edging. It's more of an edging than a hem, and I will be right back. Okay, so it is later in the evening. I've been doing other things for a while and I wanted to show you another lesson I have learned. So this is one of my sleeves and I did sew that center seam together, you know? Um, but I learned something and I haven't sewn this one yet. I'm gonna show you. Because remember the way that we draw out the patterns, you know, with the diagonal and everything? Well, remember how on my dress at the very bottom um, down here I had one side slightly longer than the other. I have the same thing with my sleeves. I am thinking that because I checked um, my pattern pieces, my big bodice front and back pieces, it's the same thing where it's my pattern itself that's a little bit off. So if you can see here I can see, you know, underneath where my points are, lining up my stitching line, and look, my pattern is about a quarter inch longer on one side than the other, okay? So that means when I go to try to pin it together, I've got extra on one side. Now I know how to ease that together, and I'll show you that, you know, in a bit, just a minute. But what I wanna show you is, I think that 
a good rule of thumb for these patterns is before, after you, you have your tissue paper all cut out, but before you cut out your fabric, double check all the seams that are supposed to be sewed together. Okay, so like on this one here, I'm gonna get a pen. One of my heat erasable pens is handy here. I am just gonna put a little line where I will need to trim this so it matches up with this one and trim that down now so if I ever use this pattern again it's going to match now. I need to do that with my big long front and back pieces on the bottom just so that you know if I make this pattern again I don't end up with this at the bottom and that's not a huge deal this isn't a huge deal it's just you know things that happen when you're drafting a pattern. So with that being said, what I need to do is while I sew this, I have extra ease on over here and I have a little extra ease there. And um, I don't have a pattern piece for this rectangle, a rectangle on the bottom. I just kind of eyeballed it and apparently I eyeballed it slightly wide on one side. So here's what I'm gonna do. I am gonna let the feed dogs ease that extra in. So I fold it in half so that the side that is bigger is on the outside. Figure out where that midpoint is and I'm gonna stick a pin there to keep it all together. Okay, that just makes it a little bit smaller of a range to fit together. Same thing up here. Okay, so this is the bigger side. I'm gonna fold it in half so the bigger side is on the outside. Find that midpoint, wherever it may be. Looks like right around here. Okay, pin that together. Now I'm gonna go over to my machine and I'm gonna take the camera over there to show you how I ease it together. Alrighty, so when I lay my fabric down, I'm putting the side with the extra down, up against the feed dogs down here, okay? So let me just go ahead and get that started here. I'm gonna just do a couple normal, you know, front and back, lock it in kind of stitches just to get it started. All right, so I am just gonna hold this, you know, just beyond this pin, fairly taut. I'm keeping the top level tighter, and because this is longer, it's gonna be looser down there. So while I'm sewing, oops, hang on, there you go. So while I'm sewing, the feed dogs are working that bottom part in, okay? So I can pull off that pin and go to the next one. And if you pay attention while you do it, it's almost like you're not even worrying about it. You know, life is gonna go on. It's all gonna get eased together. And one more little section here. back up lock it in alrighty so let's see what it looks like this is the side that had all the extra I know it's a very busy print but I want you to see how it worked all of that in you know you couldn't even tell you couldn't even tell there was an issue so I'm gonna go ahead over to my ironing board press this seam allowance open and we'll see what it looks like Okay, so I am gonna to need to get these sleeves set in. Um, what I am doing is turning them right side out, first of all, so let me get this right side out here. And my little mark that I thought I was marking the center top of the sleeve disappeared on me. I can still see which my big X designating what is front and what is back, but I'm just gonna fold it in half here where that seam is. Lay it nice and flat, and I have put a clip up here at the top, centering it where the center of this sleeve is. So this is the point that I plan on matching up to the shoulder seam, okay? And then I will match up this down below to the seam underneath, and we'll just see how it's gonna fit. All right, so I have my armhole here. This is the back, this is the front, okay? So if I get my sleeve, this is right side out, this is right side out. 
And this is my back, because I know, because I can still see my blue X marking that this is the back side. Okay, so it's the right one. If I match, start matching at the underarm seam down here and put those two together. Okay, grab my big old pins. And I'm going to pin it on both sides of the seam allowances just to keep them staying open and well behaved. Okay, so now that I know that I have the right sleeve on the right side, I can pull the shoulder over the top here and I'm going to pin where this point is, which is the halfway point on my sleeve, up here to where the shoulder seam is. And I am really curious if there's gonna be a whole lot of ease here. Okay. Ah, I think there is. Look at all that. That is a whole lot more than I feel comfortable with just easing it in on the machine. That is a whole lot more. So I'm going to pull all of this out and we are going to put gathering stitches in here. Um, that's fine. That's fine. So if Remember earlier where I said when it's going this way, I don't need them. It's when it's going this way that I do. Well, now that this is sewn together, it's a little more tricky to see, but here's my sleeve right side out. I can see that at right about this point is where that curve starts to go the opposite way. So I'm just gonna put a little pin here, oopsie, on each side so I can see where it is, okay? And while I'm here, and I can, I'm gonna go ahead and mark where that center point is again, up here at the very top, with a very big blue line, okay? So hopefully that won't disappear in the next couple minutes. So between these two pins, I'm gonna run two rows of gathering stitches um, and I'm going to do the same thing on this other sleeve and I will be right back. Okay, so I've got my gathering stitches put into my sleeve. So once again, bottom seam, right sides together, matching up that underarm seam first, pinning on either side of the seam allowance to keep those little seam allowances behaving. Oh, come on, come on. Okay. So now, flipping my shoulder seam over, and I'm gonna match that up to the very top center of my sleeve where I have a little clip. I do have my blue mark, but the clip is easier to see. Huh, I'm gonna pin that right up here. Oopsie. Okay, so now that I have my gathering stitches in, what I need to do is pin along the bottom in that lower part where there are no gathering stitches first, just matching up the sleeve to the part of the armhole where that's gonna lay nice and flat, like this, okay? So let me go ahead and do that on both sides, then right here is where my gathering stitches start. Okay, so now that that is done, I'm going to pull my bobbin threads down here because I want to take up this entire gap. So I'm just going to tug it on this side until it's going to be nice and flat. Get these gathers distributed somewhat evenly through this whole area and pin it on. And then I'll do the same thing to the other side, pulling these threads to cinch in this part. All right, so right now I've got it all pinned in there and I need to sew this on. So I use a flatbed machine and the easiest way for me to sew sleeves on a set in type sleeve on a flatbed machine is to have it so that it is inside out, but I want to look at where my gathers are so that I can keep an eye on it. So pretend my finger is my presser foot. I'm setting it like this. This is the sleeve inside here. Those are my gathers inside, okay? And that way, while it's sewing this way, you know, I can just kind of rotate it like that, but I can make sure that all of my gathers are gonna stay nicely arranged and out of trouble. So 
Um, I will sew it all the way around. And let me show you because I already put the sleeve in on this side. When I start sewing, right about where I started my gathering stitches, where the curvature changes on the sleeve, that's where I'm starting sewing. And I'm going at 5 8 7 inch all the way around. When I get back to that point, you can see I branch off into a second row here that's set in about an eighth of an inch. So then I have a row of stitching at about half inch seam allowance from the bottom, say the bottom half of the sleeve, all right? Once I have all of that done, so I have two rows of stitching on the bottom, one row up here at the top, I'm gonna come back and where the two rows of stitching are, I'm just clipping about a quarter inch deep every inch or so, so that that's gonna flex a lot more because these armholes are not huge, you know? They're, they're nicely sized, but they're not huge. So I've got that put in and I just want to point out one more little thing before we move on. Um, okay, if this is the bottom part, this is, this is the dress side, this is the sleeve side inside, okay? If I try this on and it does feel like it's too snug under my arm, I can come back and just, you know, this bottom part of the armhole, I can lower that. So I can make another line of stitching, say, from just below the point where the gather stitches are in here, and just, um, say, lowering it by a half an inch. So put a mark down here about half an inch lower, and just ease, ease it down from this point, stitch it down to about half of an inch, and then come back up here, and then clip to that lower stitching line and that's going to make it a lot more comfortable. I don't know how this is going to fit. If it is too tight up underneath my armpits, you know, I might do that. But just to know that is an option. So at this point, this is the way that the sleeves look on the outside. Okay, I have not pressed the seam allowances yet, but you know, it's kind of fun. I need to go ahead and get my elastic in here and they do not give you an elastic measurement to make the opening or the elastic that's going to go around your neck so what i'm doing is off camera here i'm just draping it around my neck to get an idea and i think i'm going to cut it right here i am going to feed this through try the dress on and then with it tried on, I'll know if I need to snug it up some more or not. So let us see if this is going to work. I have my loop here. I'm putting my elastic through it. Uh, what I really need to do is just put a couple stitches through here and they're stitches that I'm gonna be pulling out in just a few moments. But um, I found that stitches are a lot smaller to have to take out then knots and things like that. And you know, it won't take much to pull this thread out. So I've got a few stitches there. I'm just gonna tie these ends together in a knot and clip off my needle. And we're gonna call that good. All right. So let's hope this all works well. I'm just gonna start by pulling this side of my string and working its way around. I've got a lot to, to work through here before it gets over to this side. So, you know the drill, pull, wiggle, wiggle, pull, wiggle, wiggle, okay? It's going very well, but I want to make sure that I don't lose the end of my elastic, you know, by pulling too hard. So I'm just going to pin it down here so it's secure there. So while I'm, I am pulling and pulling, if I get a little overzealous, it won't disappear on me. Okay, so yay, it worked very well. Highly, highly recommend this little string method for narrow little long elastic and narrow little casings. Okay, so now, I am just going to 
slip off this end with the string. Thank you for your service. And I'm going to, we'll just put them like this so it won't disappear. Pin these two together. And I am going to try this on really quickly just to see how um, the elastic works, but also how the sleeve size is going to work. I will be right back. Okay, so I am trying it on here. It's comfortable. What I did is I actually cinched in my elastic quite a bit in the back here, so I know how it's going to need to be. Um, the armholes seem to be good. I do have a little more fluff on my shoulders than it did in the picture, just because in the picture there were no gathers up here. In my sleeves there are. I just don't see how I could have gotten away from that, but you know. At this point too, I have a couple little clips here on my side seams. Those clips are telling me where I want my waistband to go, okay, because I'm going to be sewing a casing for elastic right here, and that way you know, if you can imagine it, it's going to be cinched in. But that way it's going to match my waist, which is probably very different from where the pattern is, just because, you know, lower chest, high waist, you know, body types are different. Every single body is different, so being able to place it so it's comfortable on you is a good thing. So anyway, I have it marked where I want my elastic to go. I have my neckline at a position that it's comfortable. My sleeves are good, I can move around. So I think I'm good. I'm gonna go ahead, change out of this again, and then really the only things we still need to do is put in the waist and hem the bottom. And I know you can't see, um, but the bottom is at a fairly long length. I would say it's at shin level for me, um, which is kind of the look on the pattern picture. Once I have the elastic in, it's probably going to be a little bit shorter. And so I don't know that I'm going to be hemming it too much. I think I factored in just for a narrow hem, and that's probably what I'm going to be doing. So let me go ahead and switch back out of it, and we'll finish this up. Okay, so I just got my little elastic stitched together. You know, it's thin enough. You can just overlap it and hand stitch it, and it popped back in. So I have just, you know, a couple inches right there that I need to finish edge stitching. This is the very back just so that it won't, you know, go like that on me. So let me do that and then we'll work on the waistline. Okay, so I have this inside out and I just kind of transferred where those clips are on the outside and I put them on the inside, the same spots. Now I want to make sure that they're level so what I'm going to do is measure, um, I guess I will measure with this ruler here, from the underarm seam to where the clip is on this side, which is nine inches, and the same thing over here, which is 10 inches. Well, we're gonna go with 10 inches. So let me move this one down one inch or thereabouts, and then I think we're going to be level. So now what I'm going to do is just, here's one clip here at 10, one clip here at 10. Okay, I know that this is probably cheating, but I'm just gonna fold it in half, okay? I have the top of my dress, you know, folded over like this. And, with it pulled fairly tight, folded in half, I'm gonna go over to my iron and iron this so there's a crease going straight across here. I got both layers, the front and the back layer together. And that way I will have a fold exactly where I want my uh, elastic waist to be. All right, so I have that crease ironed in and I just checked and I have just about enough, well I have uh, just over the amount that I need to use the last of this bias tape to make the casing. I have some very wide orange stretch lace over here. If I didn't have enough of that, I was gonna use this, but don't need to, this is going to work. So now I have this pressed in. If I open up my dress, 
I can see this fold line, all right? So I'm gonna use that fold line as a stitching guide. So what I'm gonna do is take the raw edge here. Remember, I have one side that's folded, one that's raw. And just like when I was doing around the top, fold in the little edge here, about a quarter inch. And I'm gonna place that raw edge of my elastic right along where that fold line is. And I'm gonna stitch it about a quarter inch down from the edge here, all the way across, and just feed it through my machine all the way around um, and I'm just gonna place it as I'm sewing it. I'm not gonna pin it ahead of time. So let me go ahead and do that and I will be right back. Okay, so I've got it sewed on and I'm over here at my ironing board. And what I'm gonna do is just turn this tape up. This is where I joined it. I ended up joining it, you know, on a back near a side. I think that that would be better than front and center, you know? But I'm just gonna flip it upward and press it up, okay? And then once I have it pressed up all the way around, I'm gonna pick a spot to leave open, probably about that much, and I'm gonna do the same thing with the string. You know, leave a loop out, pin it closed, top stitch it, or edge stitch it here, you know, leaving that opening with both ends of the string hanging out, okay? Well, I was very excited to get started with this, and I completely forgot to put the string in here before I sewed my little edge stitching in. So I'm just doing this old school. I've got my bodkin connected to my elastic and I'm just feeding it through, which works fine. It works fine. It's not as fast, but you know, you skip that string step. So, you know, we'll get through it. I just wanted to let you know, doing this old school bodkin and pulling it through method instead. Okay, so I got my elastic all the way through. Now when I cut my elastic, I cut it to my actual waist size. And of course, I have not tried this on. I don't want it super tight, but I am thinking that if I overlap it an inch or so and stitch it that way, that that should be fine. You know, I should have enough body in this that it's going to pull it in some, but it's not going to be so tight that it's gonna be uncomfortable. So, just like the other one, I'm just gonna hand stitch my elastic together, overlapping it like this. Once that's done, let it pop into the casing and then edge stitch to finish off that top little opening in the casing. All right, so I've got the waist done. The last thing is this hem, and remember I've got one side that's a little longer than the other. I am just gonna go over to my serger and from this point, trim it off, you know, so that it blends in over here so that the entire thing is just one uniform length all the way around. And then I'm gonna put a narrow hem in it. So to me, that is uh, turning it up probably about three eighths of an inch or so, and then turning it up again. So I probably got about three quarters of an inch of fabric up, and then I can just machine stitch it along the edge right here, press it, and then we'll be done. So here it is, you know, bright sunshiny day here. And I kept trying to find pockets in the sides, but there were no pockets, but that would be easy to put in. But overall, this has not been about this project in particular, but about trying and using that letter low golden rule method. And you know what, I'm intrigued and I kind of like it. Now, what I would suggest is if you are going to try it, make your first couple projects relatively simple. Like this is a pretty simple project, you know? 
and I think that that way you can make sure that your seams are, you know how I had an issue with my front was slightly at a different length than my back here and here, you know? Um, if it's a simple pattern, it's going to be a lot easier to troubleshoot those things while you're figuring out how your personal body proportions work with the standard letter low. Because even though they base it based on your bust and based on your hips, um, there's going to be little tweaks. There's always little tweaks. You saw with my arm, how I spread out my arm. I'm glad I did, you know, that way it fits me a lot more comfortably. But anyway, I hope you liked it. I hope you got something out of it. Try it if you want. What I like about that letter low system is you own all of those patterns, okay? It's kind of like if you bought the entire pattern catalog where you have some formal stuff, some everyday stuff, some pants, some skirts, some tops, some blouses, some men's stuff, some children's stuff, some, you know, you own something of everything. And so, and it's yours forever. You know, the, that book I have was from the early 80s. It's yours forever and you can modify things however you want to. So I think it's kind of cool. I think it's kind of cool. I don't know if I'm gonna, you know, jump in and buy more and more pattern supplements and you can, you can keep buying, you know, supplements every year or go back and find them, you know, used somewhere. Um, but I like it. I like it. I think it would be good, especially if you live in the middle of nowhere and you don't particularly want to go and have to buy a pattern. But you do need to know how to sew and you do need to know how you would put to things together. Okay. So I don't necessarily think that the letter low system is the best thing for an extreme beginner. But I would say if you already know how to sew, you know basic construction, you know, you've done a zipper here, you've done buttonholes there, you know basically how it all works, give it a try. You know, I think that that would work for you. So anyhow, I will talk to you later. Hope you got something out of it and I'll see you then. Bye bye. Mm -hmm. City strife, horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and sew and spin, and move the horses in to the barn. Then time to move them out again. Red barns, green pastures, beautiful my houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This light pleases me. It is plain to see I'm living my bucolic life.